Outstanding, the ultimate accolade for teachers. We challenge primary teacher James Evelyn to go from good to outstanding. A top inspector observes one lesson. Two experts will fine-tune his practice and help improve his presentation. He also gets comments and advice from teachers across the country who've seen his lesson on the web. James then has two weeks to take on all the advice before the inspector comes back for the final verdict. Having a one-hour lesson on the internet, you know, it's there, it's warts and all. But you kind of think, oh my God, there's so much stuff on there. How bad is my lesson? James Evelyn is in his third year of teaching after a career in politics. I started a career in public affairs in Westminster and uh, really, really enjoyed it and stuff, but just found towards the end the kind of office lifestyle wasn't fulfilling. I mean, the money was better, but it wasn't fulfilling. And so I quit and retrained and haven't really looked back. Southwold Primary is a two-form entry school in North London. The school rates his teaching as good. He's very well prepared, very organised. He's never had a day off and he has a genuine love for education, knowledge and imparting that for children. Show me what I get if I half 30. To move to outstanding, James will focus the challenge on numeracy with his year 3-4 class. I'm very fond of my class. There's a big range of abilities which I find the most challenging part of the job. They're all engaged in their learning. They're all working hard and they're all achieving, I think. He's a good teacher because when we don't understand something, he makes us understand it. 10, 15, 20, not 40. He's a good teacher because he teaches us stuff that we don't know. Everyone thinking about an equivalent fraction to two thirds. I think what James could work on would be engaging all the pupils, looking at the whole range in the classroom and not letting any of the children hide. OK, tricky one. Watch her, she gets it wrong. I think the big one for me is the differentiation. It's just making sure all children are engaged all the time. Fantastic, give her a clap, that's a tricky one. James plans his lesson on data handling. One of the kind of um, key areas in maths is sorting information. And to finish off the lesson, we're going to have a, just, a little, a, just a quick session on how we sort these animals. I think the temptation for the children is always just to go for colour and, and the immediate. So I guess my challenge as a teacher is to make them think kind of beyond that. I hope it'll be a nice way to finish the lesson off. It's the day of James's first observation. With hundreds of inspections under her belt, school inspector Claire Gillies leads teams up and down the country. She certainly knows an outstanding lesson when she sees one. I'm at Southwold Primary School to watch James Evelyn with his Year 3-4 class. This is the second lesson on data handling. OK, start off lesson today. We're going to do some work, um, some number work. James has 60 minutes to impress our inspector with his numeracy lesson. OK, Yaz, is that, yes or no, the biggest number they can make? No. Who needs to move to make it bigger, Yaz? Chloe needs to swap with her, Louise. Is he right, Camille? Yeah. Yes, he is. Make the smallest number you can. How many tens? Three. Good. What else? Um, if you double um, 37 plus 37, it equals 74. 74? Good. You're good at doubling. Zed, what time table is it in? Is it in one? Mm. What's it in? Three, four. Four? No. In an outstanding lesson, you'll certainly notice that little opportunities, for example, to extend literacy or numeracy is picked up by the teacher and it has a sort of life to it that carries the students or pupils along. OK, hands down now, please, moving on. On Friday, we learned about carol diagrams. Before we move on today, we're going to do just some quick work just refreshing our memories after the weekend. OK? So, Lavender. So we're sorting out the children based on their age and on their gender. Very good. Joseph? Good. So a stranger from another planet would come in and realise, oh, Joseph's a boy. They didn't know. Everyone happy with carol diagrams? Yeah. yeah? I thought we were good at that on Friday, so I thought we can move on today to something new. And today, our learning objective is sorting using a Venn diagram. But we're still sorting, depending on whether um, children are girls or boys, and if they're eight. Uh, Enoris. 
Good boy. Why is it always there, Samaya? He's aged eight, but he's not a girl. Good. What I want to do is some work in our books. Samaya's table. You're going to draw in your books three Venn diagrams. Next two groups, one behind Amelia, are going to draw just two Venn diagrams, Rachel. And this table here, I'm going to do some sorting with me on the table. Um, multiply five to have twenty-five. Five times. Five times. So, what do we put it here or here? Here. There. Well done. Russia. What is it? Remember the name? Hexagon. Hexagon. Well done. Where does it go? Is she right? Yeah. Because because is 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 six sides and it's not red. Good boy. Okay, just to finish off with, what I want is a volunteer to come and show me how they can sort these animals. Medina, come on then. Thank you. Who can tell me how Medina sorted them? Joseph. Like the one which um, lives in the sea and the one which lives on land. Okay. I enjoyed the lesson because um, people got to share their opinions and we really knew how to do it so it's quite easy for us. Okay, now that people can work out what Zed's done. Chloe, what's he done? What's that have four legs and one that has that half A? Would a cow diagram be better for that? Because in the middle you couldn't put they've got four and eight legs. They've either got four or they haven't. So just to finish off, put your hand up if you're a green. I understand Venn diagrams and know what I'm doing. Brilliant. Okay. So how did James get on? James, thank you very much for letting me join in that numeracy lesson. I mean, I, I'll say how much I loved the, the um, animal thing at the end, the moving around and the names at the beginning was just great. And your use of the interactive whiteboard to do both the starter and that plenary section, that was, you know, you're relaxed and calm about it. It's human, it's fun. I'm going to, you know, plunge straight in and say it was good and I think if I have to sort of um, distill three things, perhaps, that s prevented it from getting into that outstanding category, it would be, first of all, that there were um, some individuals who just didn't do as much as I'm sure you hoped they would. Yeah. They spent ages wa them. waiting for the bottom of the oh, pencil yeah. pot to draw the circles. Um, thought occasionally, um, when they gave either a weird answer, a bizarre answer, a wrong answer, you could be more not quite, but that's very interesting. Just a little boosting, it. just a little bit more enthusiastic. Some of the answers were just slightly good, okay. We just, it was yeah. a bit cool. Um, there was a feeling of, well, so what? Why do we want to do these Venn diagrams or Carol diagrams? If you can just think of some way to really say, well, it's useful because, um, I think that's our challenge. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much. Lovely. With the first observation over, the inspector highlighted James's need to manage a wide range of ability more effectively, be more responsive to his pupils' answers, and to help them understand the relevance of what they're learning. It's time to bring on the experts. To boost James's progress, help comes from primary maths expert Andrew Jeffrey and voice and communications coach Ulrika schulte bauchlo Last lesson today, we're going to do some work. Uh, they start by watching James's lesson. Quick work, just refreshing our memories after the weekend. I feel okay. he's very engaging. He has a very patient, calm, relaxed manner. I thought so. They all wanted to work with him and for him. They were listening to him carefully. So we're going to sort out the same data as before, different names this time. Points I would like him to work on is body language. Hands out of the pockets and just see what else could he do. I think a lot of them learnt a lot of things, but I think the more able groups, they could have perhaps achieved a lot more. Sometimes you miss maybe some opportunities for the, to, to really interpret what the children were saying and get something more out of that. OK, James, at the start of your lesson, okay, the starter 
was good, there were some good elements on it, but I felt they were sitting on the carpet for quite a long time. Andrew suggests ways of making the carol diagram activity more kinesthetic. Depending on the weather, you might want to do this indoors or outdoors, but uh, this is the human physical carol diagram thing. So imagine a line on the floor, and uh, you can get all the children and say, right, boys, this side of the line, everybody else, this side of the line. You get them moving. That's OK, but then you might want to do two criteria at the same time, as per the carol diagram. So what we need is a second tape going the other way and now say right can we use this second line so we have boys on this side girls on this side eight-year-olds on this side and non eight-year-olds on this side everybody go all right and they yep. will naturally sort themselves into those four groups it's terribly flexible it's a great thing for data handling don't be afraid yeah. to use the most important resource in the classroom which is the children, children. themselves yeah yeah, yeah. There was something that you had on the board in your lesson, which was three intersecting coloured circles. And I just thought it would be not a lot of work for you to get something like this. Now, here's a, a yellow piece of acetate and a red piece. And they can physically, those children who like learning kinesthetically, intersect them. There might be one or two children for whom that really makes a difference, the ability to be tactile with them. Yeah. Now, the sorting ability, you, the, the group that you were with, they were sorting hexagons and pentagons. I wonder if there's something that would be more relating to them. So, as a simple example, I've got here some just building bricks. And uh, there's a number of different ways they could classify these. They could classify them by shape, they could classify them by number, they could classify them by colour. Something that they, they can relate to more readily, perhaps. Right. Um, the other thing is the higher ability children as well. Why not stretch them to three circle problems? Give okay. them some three-circle problems. Um, so if we've got an A, a B, and a C, um, start introducing vocabulary to them, like the intersection. They'd love that. And yeah. vocabulary is everything, really. So, for example, could they describe a shaded region? Could they describe that someone here was in set B and set C, but not set A? Yeah. Or other ideas, because it's a common misconception that Venn diagrams have to have two intersecting circles. What about that? We used to call them the fried egg set at school. All right. An example would be children in my class, year three children in my class. I like that idea. Yeah, Maybe. and it's moving them well beyond where you would expect them to be at the age of eight and nine, and therefore you've got that opportunity to show that they have moved and your good to outstanding chances go up a little. Yeah. Samaya, what else? Um, if you double um, 37 plus 37 equals 74. 74, good. You're good at doubling. Anything else? In, in terms of the questioning, um, some of the answers that were given to you were so interesting that I want to encourage you to be a bit daring and to right. say, hang on, actually, that was such an interesting answer. I want to just kind of scratch the needle across the record and say, right, oh, oh, that's interesting. Tell me more. Some of the questions that you need to come back with are the quality questions like, oh, how did you work that out? Yeah. Or, for example, can you tell us all how you did that? Or who agrees with that? Um, I guess one question I'd like to ask is, we're doing time next. Uh -huh. how, how can you use these ideas in that kind of area of mathematic learning? Good question. I think the big issue is probably to forget the actual specific suggestions that, that I've given you today and think about the principles behind them, the principles of making sure that everyone is extended at their own level, make sure that the resources are there so that everyone can get on, make sure that the children are moving in some way, yeah. and, of course, Ask them what time they, they do certain things, you know, just bring it relevant to them. Yeah. And, um, yeah, good luck. I hope that it will be outstanding. Great. Thanks, Andrew. Well done, man. Just watch how it looks. It looks almost sort of um, dictatorial. How does this look? Well, it's very defensive. Yeah. It doesn't look very authoritative in the mirror. It looks too relaxed and casual. So, just... Find now a gesture which maybe would demonstrate now children come to the carpet. Uh, okay, children, come to the carpet now, please. Yeah. And point to the carpet. So now try to find something with both hands. Okay, children, uh, come to the carpet now, please. <laughs> no, they were sitting up there in the oh, corner. <laughs> They're sitting all right. over there on the tables, at the tables, and right. gather them and get them to the carpet. Okay, children, come to the carpet now, please. Yeah, how is this? It's supporting what I'm asking them to do. Yeah. Quite clearly. Yeah. yeah. Good. And I have a little present which is really only meant as a joke. <laughs> and which may be help you. These are some wonderful golden safety pins. 
So if you want to close your pockets, right. just to remind yourself. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Before we move on today, we're going to do some quick work just refreshing our memories after the weekend. So, coming to the voice, I'd like you to hold this. So, we will start with a one-to-one. -one. And you explain to me what you'd like me now to do. Okay, today we've got a pile of shapes and we're going to sort these shapes using a Venn diagram. Okay, now we're taking it a step further and what I like you now is to slow down and to stretch your words. Good morning, children. Today in maths, we're going to sort these shapes on the carpet here using our Venn diagram on the board here. Fantastic. Is there a danger with your voice slowing down that the children might think that you're not kind of talking normally and think, what's happening here? OK, now, you can balance this out by going up and down more with your voice. Right. Yeah? OK. Try it once more. Good morning, children. This <laughs> morning, we're going to sort these shapes using our Venn diagram on the whiteboard. OK? So think about the characteristics of the shapes and how you can sort them out in our two circles. Yeah. Have you slowed down now? I feel slower. Yes. Yeah. And it, it sounds perfect. With his final observation just weeks away, James is back to the classroom to put all the advice into action and work on raising his game. I know why you're putting the pins in, because a lot of adults put their hands in their pocket. Yeah, exactly. First of all today, everyone's going to have a number. This game is going to involve moving where you're sitting. If you are holding a multiple of three, stand up and swap with someone else. Even number. It should be everybody else, shouldn't it? I enjoyed the session. I feel that I kind of have addressed those points which Ulrika and Andrew brought up. This time, those of you whose number is bigger than 15. I try to ensure that I'm much more forward and clear and articulate. Even number, your number divides into it. You need to move that. Ulrika's sort of pin gimmick has been a success, I think, because my hands aren't going anywhere near my, my pockets anymore. Today, we're going to move on to using timetables. In my hand here, I got this last night on the way home from work, I picked up a timetable. What do you think a timetable is? Um, you could use timetables if you, like, if you have a meeting. Yeah, that's true. But the big thing, things for me in this lesson were, you know, contextualising what we're learning. The fact that they kind of gave their own real-life experiences of timetables show that it meant something more to them than perhaps the Venn diagrams might have done last time. Here's some money for you. Hold it tightly. What I want you to do is to go and buy a ticket from Jared. On that occasion, the whole role play thing, buying and selling tickets, reading timetables, getting information, really worked for them. Kind of kinesthetic things. That, that, that's the way in for them. And that was the best thing for me. James gets a chance to reflect on his first observation with Deputy Head Caroline King. Zed, what timetables are they in? Four. Four? No. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no. It's like Little Britain. Yeah, uh, computers no. says no. <laughs> when they give you answers that aren't always correct and aren't always going to be correct, remembering that they need to feel safe in that learning environment. Mm. And sometimes the learning point for yourself and for them oh is God, the mistake. Oh you know, and I know it's safe to always go with the ones that are, are able and able it's to... It's subconscious as well, almost. Yeah. You don't know doing um, it. But it's, all of them need to make pro progress in that session. And even if the progress is, she's managed to speak. It's the confidence level, isn't it? One, two, three, Ooh, some of you are out, OK? In the two weeks since his observation, teachers all over the country and beyond have been watching James's lesson on the web and leaving their comments. I think one thing I need to think about, which has been brought up on here, is how I engage all the children all the time. Um, and one thing Caroline said, which I think has also been mentioned on the website, is the tendency to pick the same children. In my class, there's some children who are really reluctant speakers, so it's kind of tapping into them in different ways. And that's something I need to think about, definitely. Um, this, this person's mentioned about the 15 minutes on the carpet, sort of maximum, which is a fair point. I think I've, I've wrestled with this quite a lot in my sort of career, and you always are always mindful of that. Um, I think the way around it, which I'm going to try and do in the future, is to make it more hands-on, more kinesthetic, children moving around more, more sort of play-based learning, if you like. Remember what we're thinking about most of all, apart from the nice food, is measurement. Stop, stop. 
the web feedbacks made me realise that those things I can do to address, you know, the kind of holes in my lesson. When we're dividing into thirds, how many groups are we going to have? Three lots of what are going to make 24? I think just getting your hands dirty and doing the cooking really gives it a context. No. Weight is... 10 grams of grams. Uh, okay. And just makes the children realise, A, why we're learning it, and B, they want to do it. So, so they get much more involved, they're much more engaged, and so that's really good. Mm. I'm looking forward to try that jelly later on. When you've got a class with such a, a great range of abilities, it's crucial that you know, the activities that I do are engaging for all abilities, and hopefully they're engaged and they'll learn. It's the day of James's final observation. Claire Gillies is back, and it's crunch time. Right, this week in maths, we've been looking at money. With all the expert advice and weeks of practice behind him, will James have made it from good to outstanding? Right, now lots of you have been asking me, what is the tape for on the floor? Now you're going to find out. Very sensibly, stand up. I'm going to show you on the board some coins. If this side is greater, I want you to move this way. If this side is greater, I want you to move this way. Here we go. Have a look and move to the side that you think is the biggest. Lots going this way. Let's do one more. Is this size? This size? The activity we did in the copy, it was fun because um, it involved us to move around. On the board, I've got a receipt. If you look very carefully at the receipt, you'll see that it's in columns. And this is what today's learning objective is all about. Adding up using column additions. And what I've bought is some food items and everyone's favourite, some broccoli. Yeah. Ah. I love them. Now, lavender. Can you pick one for me, please? The banana. The banana. 19p. Uh, Helen Louise, another item, please. How much are they? 65p. 65p. Abdullahi? Uh, toilet roll. How much is toilet roll, Abdullahi? 50p. 50p. OK. Using our columns, we add them up. 9 plus 5, 14. The 4 goes here, and we carry the 1. It was easy, because adding on, we learned before, and Adding on money is just the same as adding on um, numbers. What we'll do now is we're going to stop and go to our desks. If you are sitting on Rachel's table or Samaya's table, I've given you a little brochure. What I want you to do is to pretend that you've got £30 to spend and need to provide breakfast, lunch and dinner for two days for three people. If you are working on Amina's and Jared's table with £3, you need to come up with as many different combinations of food as possible. This table here, you're going to do some work with me using some money and our food objects. OK? No food? Yes. £3. It needs to be less than £3. £30. £30. Look, can you see? You have £30. £30. £30 of dinner. Can I see it? We'll do that. That's going to be for dinner. Oh, yeah. um, pizza. I'm having pizza for lunch today. That's £2 for dinner. Pizza. We had to um, write day one breakfast, day one lunch, day one dinner. And um, I got a bit confused on them. That covers the orange and the banana. 10, 15, 17, 19. Good boy. Fantastic. How about you? How are you getting on? Not very well. It was fun because we need to have skills in our life if we want to get a job and get yourself a house. And I can see those children over here have managed to keep within budget of £30. OK? The children over here, we were using coins and we were paying for items as if we are in a shop. Who Each time I asked them, they got the right coins out, which was really, really good. Will all James's hard work have paid off? 
James, let me say perhaps straight away that um, it was certainly a, a stronger lesson than the last one I saw. I don't feel as a whole that lesson was outstanding, but it was good and there were some sort of really strong points. The beginning, you know, was a lovely idea and they, they smiled and they laughed and they loved moving about. So that's a real plus. It was great that you'd thought to give different work to the different tables. Mm -hmm. I think the, what, the lot who were doing the you mustn't spend more than three pounds, mm -hmm. a few of them were quite ready for the concept of how, how many things could you manage to buy without going over the three pounds. You know, a little bit more challenge. Right. And the, the, the group on these tables here, did they get it was three adults? Yeah. The 30 pounds seemed very, very generous to them mm -hmm. because we weren't buying enough. Uh, so I think the reason it wasn't this time upstanding was because they clearly, some of them, done a lot of this before. They could remember doing it last year, last term. And I think some of them needed a bit more oomph to go further. Yeah. But, you know, that we had three good chunks. We kept going. They were happy enjoying themselves. So let's look for all the positives. And uh, I'm sure that the outstanding lesson is there on the horizon. Thank and you. thanks again for letting me join the lesson. Thank you. Over the last couple of weeks, I've really kind of got an idea of what you need to be doing to teach, to teach an outstanding lesson. And I think the fact that I felt today that it wasn't kind of where it should be uh, made me realise kind of where I'd fallen short. But there's been so much good input from people, uh, which has been really beneficial. I've got, I've got a good sense of what I need to be doing to deliver an outstanding lesson. Um, and I'm confident I can do it one day. Mm -hmm.